Today, we're going to talk about NoLoco, a no-code application that's used for internal applications that's loved by teams for how easy it is to implement, but how configurable it is at the same time. Now, we're going to talk about NoLoco as both a front-end application as well as a back-end. A lot of no-code tools specialize in one or the other. They act as a front-end that you connect to a back-end database, or they act as a back-end database that you might connect to another tool to be able to make web applications from. But NoLoco, you can use for both. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we're a no-code implementation partner. If you haven't signed up for NoLoco, you can do so using the affiliate link in the description below. Now, I'm on the pricing page because I think it's important to talk about the use cases that are a really good fit for NoLoco versus other ones that might be a fit for a different tool instead. So if we take a look at this and we scroll down, one of the first things that you'll notice is that they have a per user per month pricing, seat-based pricing. Now, this is similar to Airtable. It's similar to CRMs and project management tools, but this is different than other front-end no-code tools on the market, which might utilize a fixed pricing, meaning that you could have a 1,000 or 10,000 external users for a given price. Because of this pricing model, you'll probably be gravitating towards applications that are geared at your internal teams or internal users. So if I have a team of 10 people and we're running projects, this would work out great. We can use the pro plan here. We'd be paying $150 a month for those 10 users to be able to utilize the applications that we've built for the team. Now, I do think there is a lot of value on the pro plan by itself. Certainly, there's always going to be a reason to upgrade to business or to enterprise, but honestly, to be able to have user role functionality, to have field validation rules, and you'll see that there's a lot we can do with the permissions that we have available to us inside of NoLoco. I really think you have a lot of that base level functionality without having to necessarily upgrade to a more expensive tier. But the thing that's interesting about this, if we scroll down and we take a look at this pricing calculator, because oftentimes NoLoco gets compared to other front-end applications, again, with that fixed pricing. They do have the ability to make this available to an external audience, but it's going to change that pricing because initially when they started with just that seat-based pricing, and then people said, well, hey, we want to make this available to our customers. We don't want to pay a customer seat per month at $15 a month. That doesn't make sense. Then they introduce this additional pricing, which gives more flexibility to use it for an external portal. But if you take a look, if we plug this in, we can see that our first 100 active users are $119. So it's about a dollar per external user per month. So those are people that are not part of your domain. It's not your internal team. They're outside of the system. Well, let's think about that. So at that price, we've got other options available to us. If we have an app where we have 10,000 users and we have lots of different customers, we're more B2C driven, this isn't going to be a good fit for us because there are more affordable options that are out there. However, it is nice for us if we're using this in a B2B sense, and maybe we need a partner portal as part of what we're doing. So we've got a CRM and we're working with 50 different partners. So we can say, hey, we've got 50 external users we want, and that makes it a pretty attractive price for us. So overall, I still think this is going to be the best fit if you're using it to build internal applications for your team and you have a limited external audience you want to share it with. If you're doing something really big, you're going to want to look for another tool that's available. And another thing with this is that they're not trying to be a jack of all trades and also manage websites. You're not building a website and landing pages on this tool. It's really just people authenticate, they get access into the application, and you'd build any kind of websites on a different platform. Now let's talk about data sources, which I think is a huge strength of NoLoco. In many other front-end applications, you get a couple of different data sources you can connect to. And this is exactly how NoLoco started with Airtable. And then we have Google Sheets. But you'll notice that they also offer Postgres and MySQL. I think this is really important because many organizations, if you're a team within a larger organization, you don't get to control where your data lives. You already have a database of customers that's your source of truth that lives someplace else, and you want to be able to tap into that data. You don't always get the luxury of building everything from scratch to build a backend in Airtable or build it in Google Sheets. You need to use what's given to you. And so I think that's really flexible, the ability to have Postgres and MySQL as options. They've got Xano and Beta, which is kind of the darling of backend for no-code tools. It's great that's available. And then SmartSuite is rolling out here in the next couple of weeks as well. But aside from all of this, you could not bring any backend data source and you could use no loco tables, which means that this encompasses both the front end functionality, building the layout of how this interface works and the back end. 
And it's not just a backend where it's a database. We have workflows and we can use webhooks and have automations and things that you'd imagine with other backend systems. So it's really nice if you're looking for kind of an all-in-one solution. Now, there are typically three main options of getting started with no loco, and one of these is to be able to use one of their out-of-the-box templates. As you scroll through these, you can see that there are not a ton of options, but they are very well crafted. So being able to start with a project management template or inventory management, and you can see based on the icon that some are geared for Airtable and some are also for no loco tables. Another option would be to use a backend data source like Airtable, and we can connect and authenticate to Airtable to set this up. One of the things that's crazy here is that they're actually using AI to optimize our setup based on the tables that we actually have coming over from Airtable. AI is optimizing the interface that it creates for you. This is the equivalent if Airtable took its own tables and when you're creating their interfaces, it designed it based on what it thought you needed for the application that you're looking at. So this is a really cool feature that it's able to optimize for what you're building and create different screens on your behalf. You can, of course, configure these the way that you need them specifically to be. And a third crazy option that we can do is we can actually use AI to be able to generate the tables for us. I'm using no loco tables. I'm putting in a text description and we're gonna see what this generates. It's created four different tables for us, including our own linked relationships that we need between the tables. Now this isn't gonna be perfect. I've gotten some pretty mixed results from it, but it can save a lot of time. And when it's all said and done, we can see that it even includes some demo data, which makes it more visually easy for us as we're building out our application. Once we've got our application set up, now I'm gonna show you some of the functionality of No Loco. And we're not gonna do a full on tutorial, but I do wanna show you some of the strengths that we're looking at. So right now what you're seeing is the actual interface of the application that our end users would see. I haven't published this. I'm still in kind of our test mode before we published it. And our end users aren't going to see this column on the left-hand side. But what we're seeing here in the blue in this navigation area is how we can create a navigation for our application. And this I love because oftentimes we're limited to navigation no-code tools where it's all of our tables across the top of it. And we don't really get to configure that experience. Here we've got dividers. We've got folders. We can have external links as part of this. And I think overall, it feels really useful as we're designing our application. So let's say we wanted this view to look a little bit different. We could go to our advanced settings here and we could change how this displays. So in this case, we're looking at a board or at a Kanban, but you see many of the other options that you're familiar with, with other no-code tools. We have Gantt charts, we have timelines, calendars, charts. There's really a lot of flexibility here. We can even create full-on dashboards. Their charting capabilities looks really slick as we can line charts up with collections of our records to be able to get at the data we're looking for. All of this is very configurable. In fact, we can simply toggle on and off our build mode as an administrator as we're working on this in the system. So I can turn this on and suddenly now we're able to make changes. What happened? We flipped a switch. The whole user interface doesn't change. And this I really appreciate about how intuitive it is to be able to work with no loco because many other applications, it's a very different experience when you're building versus when you're using the application. Anytime we wanna create a new record, this is done with a form. And this is something that's handled for us automatically in this case. So when we click a new project, we have a new project form that we can fill out. This is pretty common with no-code front-end applications, but one of the things that I think is really unique is the amount of configurability we have with forms. Let me show you an example here. So we're trying to create a project and we want the user to select a client account, and then we wanna have a primary contact for this project. Well, if we're a B2B organization, we probably wanna see the contacts that work at that account. And therefore, we don't want to be able to select every contact in the system. We want to be able to filter that down. Well, many other applications can't handle this kind of logic. And in fact, we turn to one of our other partners, Fillout Forms, because Fillout works really well with Airtable and many other systems to be able to do that kind of filtering. But no loco, their forms are awesome. And you can use them as they are out of the box for a lot of that configurable logic. So let's add our filter here and we'll choose a field and we'll use the account field for this. And we can say if it is equal to, and then in this case, we're gonna say if it's equal to the client account and choose the value of that unique identifier for it. And there you go. That's how easy it is to be able to set up a filter that works contextually inside of the system. Pretty cool. 
And there's a ton of things that we can do with permissions as well. So at a high level, if I want to control the visibility of a page or a component, I'm able to do that and we can say everyone's got access or just internal users or our clients. Or we could also have our different user roles and we could say all user roles could see this or only specific user roles or if they don't have this user role. And then we can even add custom rules. And so we could say based off of certain data, based on that logged in user, we're able to use that data to determine who can see those pages or elements on a page. Or we can also set up filters within collections. So if we come to our configuration here, we can set up a filter and say, show my project, show the logged in users the projects that they have, and these will display so I can see only my projects. And what's great is we have the ability to impersonate other users in the system as we're configuring this. So if I wanna click on a different user, I can and I can see their projects as opposed to my projects to see how it looks through another user who might have a different set of permissions than we do. And we can get even more granular with our permissions by applying them at the database level. So I could say for our projects, let's enable permissions here. And we could create an entirely custom set of permissions about which fields we can read, update, and create. We can make our data very actionable inside of NoLoco by adding buttons to objects. So I can click on action buttons here Let's open up this one and we could add different actions. We could update, we could create, we could delete all of our CRUD things, but we could also navigate other places in the system or even run an on-demand workflow. And these workflows are super powerful. They're very akin to Airtable's automations. Now remember, because no loco can function both as the front end and the back end, you don't have to use it with another system, but you can. You can use these workflows as automations, connecting to another backend database or standalone, but this is gonna feel really similar. You've got a trigger, you can watch certain fields, you can have conditionality for that conditional logic. We can send an email, we could send a push notification, we could trigger a webhook with another system like Zapier or Make for integrations. We've got our CRUD operations. We can even use OpenAI and be able to do different summarization all within the application as opposed to relying on a different system. I hope you've been able to see just how powerful NoLoco is as both a front-end and a back-end no-code application. If you have any questions about getting set up, feel free to reach out to us at automationhelpers.com where we're offering a free 30-minute consultation.